everyone. I just thought I'd pop in and uh, I've been getting a lot, a lot of questions about the free workshop that's starting this Friday. Uh, starts at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, in order to get this first email, you need to be on the list. So if you would like to uh, be included in this thing, you can click on the Facebook banner above or just go to uh, art, A -R -A -L workshop.com and, uh, and just sign up or click on the links in the comment. That'll come in in a couple seconds. But most for those of you who are, who are waiting for this, um, I thought I'd go over a couple things about what to do to get ready. So let me just explain that what I'm sharing over the next week in this free workshop, these are principles, their ideas, their uh, three of the six art to life principles that I use to teach artists. And principles are different than rules. Rules make you do certain things in a certain way. Principles are ideas that allow you to apply them to your own work. Okay, so this isn't a workshop on a certain way to paint or a certain kind of material or a certain kind of subject matter. This applies, this applies to the kind of work you make, whether you're a photographer, whether you paint abstractly, whether you paint realistically, whether you paint, uh, draw, you know, sculpture, uh, I demonstrate using paint because it's so much quicker and so much easier. Um, hey, Michelle, nice to see you. Um, Fiona, hi. Hey, John. Uh, hey, Claire. Wow, from uh, Hoi An, Vietnam. Wow, fantastic, 5 a.m. Uh, great, hey, Heather, Cara. Um, okay, so, so that's what's cool about this. So you don't really need to do anything but what I, you know, in terms of you're going to be watching and learning, um, we have a really cool piece of this is some of these, these little booklets, these little workbooks I've made for each of the three lessons. And you'll be able, on Friday morning, you'll be able to download this PDF. And in it is got sort of a summary of what I'm talking about, sort of some fill in the blanks and some diagrams and some things that you can kind of do. But really, where we're going with this is I want you to take the information and kind of think about it, learn it, and then look at your work and apply it to your work and see if you can, you know, if you, what you can do in preparation for this workshop is get some of those paintings or pieces of art <coughs> that you've been stuck on for a long time and have those available so you can kind of look because that's what I'm interested in teaching. I'm, I help artists so they get unstuck and they can kind of see more objectively what to do next. We all get to this place in our work. We might start out really strong. We might be, you know, whatever it is, but at some point we don't know how to finish it or it becomes too precious or we don't feel confident uh, in even doing it and it starts to show and we get very uptight and insecure about it. All of that is what I'm interested in. That's, that's what Art to Life helps people do. That's what we're good at. And this workshop is sharing some of the principles, the three most powerful ones we teach uh, in order to kind of unpack that and help your art. So what do I need for the workshop? I would have a couple paintings around or pieces of art that you've been stuck on and kind of pull them out beforehand and look at it and sort of try to see like, huh, what's happening here? I keep getting stuck at the same stage or I get, you know, because you're, it's going to be you that's going to diagnose the problem with the tools I'm going to give you. So having that problem front and center in your mind, like ah, all my work feels, the color doesn't feel bright, or it all feels the same, or I'm kind of bored with this work. What's going on with this? How can I make this more exciting? Not just for me, but for someone looking at it. These are clues that, uh, you know, that, that, that dissatisfaction and those challenges are kind of like clues as to some of the things I'll be sharing with you that you can pay attention to and get. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about, um, you will be learning some new things, hopefully. Um, and mostly it has to do with the way I'm explaining things. You've heard a lot of the things that I might be talking about. These first three principles are design, value, and color. I'll be spending a whole week on this. 
And, and so, but it's the way I'm talking about it and the way I describe it and the hierarchy of their importance. This is such a powerful thing. And I do not know why art has not taught this way um, because it's what I do and it's not really done in other places. And it's so, so helpful. So let me unpack this for you a little bit. When you're doing things, and I use this analogy a lot. So like if you want to cut a tree down, you could use two tools. You can use a nail file or you could use a chainsaw. But if no one's ever shown you the difference and to understand the relative power of those, you could try and cut down a tree with a nail file and it just takes forever. And I think for a lot of people, you know, I know that I know this is up for people because I'm in touch with a lot of artists that their art just feels like they're, it's just sort of like a grind, you know, and it's tiring. And, and that's because the tools aren't being used. You're all gonna get stuck. We all get stuck. I get totally stuck. We get stuck. That's part of learning. And that's the cool part of art making, you know, like all of that. But we don't need to be stuck for very long. If you have some tools and some resources that you can use to figure this out, and that's what I'm interested in, in giving to you some of these principles. So yes, you can, you know, it's not like where I'm going to be showing you how to paint something and you're going to be trying to paint it and keep up. You're going to be watching. And then I want you to like, look at your own work. There's some exercises you can do to, for like sketching out these sort of design patterns and black and white patterns and things. I talk a lot about value and, this is how you're going to kind of get it in your in you know get this clarity so you can then apply it so it's all about learning this trying to understand it and then integrating it and applying it to your work um so it's pretty cool nancy nice to see you here wow yeah hey, uh, hey joan <laughs> yeah great moving to bellevue awesome um Diana saying, uh, so ready, love last year. My trouble is I need to, I need help getting started, letting go tools and making time. Yeah, well, I, you're not alone. Um, getting started, absolutely. You know, we, I'll be talking a lot about that. Um, it's, it's a thing, you know, the way we, we bring our practice, um, the way we develop our practice and how we think about our practice and so much of what's possible for us and we all, you all know this, you know, it's how we think about things that makes all the difference in the world. If we, if we start framing our, our, our practice as a, as a, something that we procrastinate about or oh, another thing on our to-do list, it starts to feel tiring because there isn't enough time. There's not enough time. There's never going to be enough time to do all the cool things. But if you can frame your art practice more like this is the time, I, maybe I only have 20 minutes, maybe I only have 30 minutes, you know, a couple times a week, but this is the time I get to be completely and utterly free. I have no restrictions. No one's telling me what to do. I, I am carefree and I, I can just explore and play with color. Like, that kind of like, notice how I'm not talking about trying to get a result, you know, like just that approach. And if you can have that openness when you start your art, you know, where you're interested in seeing what happens and there's curiosity and you can play and see the value in that. See how totally cool it is that we get to do this thing, you know, and most people w would never do this. It's scary. They don't think they are talented, whatever all the reasons are but they're never going to get to open this door to themselves. You know, creativity is something that's in all of us. And for so many people, they don't, they'll never open that door. I mean, that's why I'm really like, I feel like I'm on a mission. You know, I, I've seen people open this door and they are so excited. And then I've seen them go into it. And some of the people that, I mean, it's incredible what, if you're interested, what you can do, when you get going on this with some of the tools and the right attitude and just some of the mindset stuff, it's really, really cool because ultimately we're all totally different. And this is what we're leveraging to make powerful, authentic work is our differences. Um, hey, Margie, hi from Portugal. Uh, oh, great. She's primed. She's painting every day. It's so cool. You're going to tune in from Portugal. That's great. 
I haven't been to Portugal yet. It's on my list. Um, so, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm rambling a bit here, but you know, so we're going to be doing this workshop. You're going to be learning some new stuff. There is going to be, you know, when you learn something new and learning something new is challenging because you're not maybe good at it right out of the gate. There's uncertainty that it creates. There's, you know, but just remember that art making is a process of change and change comes, another word for change is learning. Um, so that's really, really important to, to remember that the uncertainty you're gonna feel and trying some of these things, it's like putting on a coat that's too big for you. You know, at first it's gonna feel a little odd because you, I know for many people, they won't have thought, they won't be, have this way of thinking about their work. Um, but for many of you, you will, you'll see how this reframe and understanding this will give you a new perspective on your work. I, I'm pretty, like we've done this and I've, you know, I, this content that I'm sharing with you, I, I video it and I'm really, it's very concise and I'm really, uh, you know, it's, it's really like cut down so it's not too long. So I'll be doing these, um, these live, these um, video lessons, but I'll also be supporting you guys in the Facebook, in the uh, Facebook group, the artist Facebook group. If you want to join that, you can join that. You, if you can't be there, you can be on our live call. Once that first lesson comes out, you'll be able to download this booklet and you're going to get a whole schedule of stuff. But I'm going to be doing a bunch of live trainings as well. So you can ask questions. And you can see how these things apply to art making. And that's not like, that's what I'll just be working with you, sharing what I'm doing. It'll be in my studio. I'll be sharing that. And that's going to be live. So that's coming as well. I just, I added that this year because, you know, this is, this is the week that Art to Life, this is our, our big week of teaching. And, you know, most of the people who were never, we don't get to meet most of you in person, but some of you, we will. Some will come, a small fraction will come to a workshop or they'll sign up for the Creative Visionary Program or something or, you know, whatever, but it's just this really cool thing. And we're getting so many people, as many people as we can, can to come to the free workshop. A ton of our community is showing up for it to help people that haven't been seen this before, to encourage them and to share their insights um, because it's, it's sort of turning into like this big summit, you know, of just all these people doing this thing. And it's just like once a year. So even people that went through it last year, um, it's changed a little, it's gotten better. There's more to it. Um, so it's, it's like part two, <laughs> you know? Okay. So know that there's going to be a little uncertainty with learning. I need you to step forward confidently and kind of go for this. Don't worry about outcome. Just, you know, this is, we're going to, it's like, you're going to learn salsa dancing for the first time. You're going to look kind of dumb out there, <laughs> but we got to go for it. Like, this is how, what, this is what's going to shift your work. Learning, you feel uncertain when you're learning, but after that, that's how your work improves. It, it comes with uncertainty. It comes out of change. So that was the other thing. I just want to like prime that. Um, one, a couple of practical things. What's really good to have is um, you don't need to like a lot of materials or anything, but I, what I would do is I would have one of these black Sharpie pens. These are so great and, and a pencil. And so one of the things that is cool to do is you can, and you can do this in the downloads. You'll see in the workbook that we're gonna be handing out, um, you'll be able to uh, do some small sketches and some small ideas using pencil, but then also using a black Sharpie, which has high contrast. So you can see, like I'm looking on the screen, see how that really shows up. We'll be talking about imagery and design and looking at small things and small, the loud conversation, what we see from a distance. And, and Sharpies and a nice piece of white paper or your sketchbook and a light pencil are two really good tools to have at hand so you can sketch little ideas. You can look at your painting and you can sketch it really small using a Sharpie and a pencil. So that's that's a sort of practical thing that's really good. And then having your painting around, if, if you're inspired, and a lot of people are, they'll watch, they'll look at this, they'll work in the workbook, and then they'll get their painting and they'll start, um, they'll actually work on it. Like 
go for it for a couple hours and see if you can fix it. See if you can change it. And I would love it, love it, if you could take a picture of the before and then take a picture of the after. You're gonna get a hit on your work. You'll be like, oh my God, I can totally see this. I know what to do. You'll know what to do. You'll go, go do it. It won't take long and the work will get better. And so just trust me, just check it out. That's just gonna happen a lot. So having the before and after is really fun and especially fun if you can share it in the Facebook group because it really inspires people. Um, okay. Hey, Bettina, nice to see you from Switzerland. Awesome. Uh, from uh, Deborah from Wales. Oh, it's great. Deborah, nice to see you. Um, it's so great. You know, Deborah's been, uh, you know, she took uh, the Creative Visionary program and she did this free workshop. Oh, God, Deborah, I think five years ago or four years ago. And I mean, you guys should go see Deborah Coulter's work. You should stick your website link in here, Deborah. It's just beautiful. And man, what a progression. And it's just, there's so many people when I'm doing these lives and I, I am very visual. So when I see someone's name, I just see their work. And, um, and it's just, it's a, it's a privilege, man, to just be participating and being in a community of people where their work's just getting better and better and better. And it's just, it's so cool. Um, okay. So uh, another tip for this, uh, free workshop that's coming up. Uh, another way to sort of assimilate this information uh, is to listen, sort of take notes, do the workbook that we're going to be handing out and kind of carry that around, but also go look at work that you love in other places, right? Like go, go look at a Diebenkorn painting, go look at Picasso, go whoever, whatever work you love and see if you can see the information that I'm sharing with you in the work. Because I promise you, all the work that you love, all that amazing work, it embodies most of these principles. It's they; these guys get it, right? This is this isn't like magic. These are principles and understanding about art making. So the problem is they've been never explained in an easy way. So you don't figure it out for like twenty years. So yeah, you get it eventually. But if somebody could have explained it, like I'm explaining it. It could have saved years of work. So that's another cool thing to do. The paintings that you love, those paintings, when you picture your favorite paintings, those all have powerful design. They're using color in ways that I'm talking about because that's what makes them so strong. So that's, that's another great way to understand this. You know, we can look at our own art, but in a way it's hard to see our own art. It's hard to be objective but looking at other work, especially really strong work, to see how those principles are being used is really, really good. Hi, Susan, nice to see you. Um, yeah, so, so these first three principles that I'll be sharing, um, they're, the, they're pretty much the meat and potatoes of what I teach. And I'm, my intention is to, for everyone here, for everyone who's, who participates, that this is kind of like coming to a workshop um, that you would pay for and come to Mexico or whatever. You know, I, I am pretty certain that I can get people really far along just in that week. I really, I really believe this. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I need you to come, you know, the most important things to watch are, are the uh, free video lessons that I send you. You'll get those by email. And then, and that's great, and that's tons right there. But if you have extra energy, when you download that workbook from that from that first lesson, you'll have the schedule, and you can join in every other day. I'm going to be doing live trainings from my studio, and they're going to be really informal and like I'm. It's not planned. I mean, I'm just going to be teaching just like I do at a at a live workshop. I don't plan it. I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to be talking about design the first day, showing examples. I might blow up some images um you know so we can see them really big i'll be changing things talking about things but more importantly answering your questions um, because just like in a live workshop the more questions people ask and especially in front of everybody else which is what we do in the facebook group then the 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 group gets those answers and they they progress the more questions, the more quick, the more questions and the quicker you can ask them repeatedly, the more different ways I'll answer them and the further along you'll get. I always say this at a workshop. It's like, you're not gonna, you know, I know you feel embarrassed. You're gonna watch this demonstration I'm gonna do 
and you might have a question about it and you'll ask your question and then you'll get the answer and you'll go, okay, okay, great, I get it. And then you'll go to apply this on your work. And then you'll get about 50 more questions or the same question will come up and then you're gonna to have to ask again. And probably people in the comments will start answering and helping, but I understand that it you got to hear this a bunch of different ways. These answers have to come multiple times from just, you just gotta hear it over and over again. It just takes some time. The big thing that artists are missing is, you know, there's a couple things, there's three things. One, they're missing, they don't have all the information. I was just talking, I was on a, on a Facebook uh, call with Alice Sheridan today and we were talking to her group in England. And if you haven't checked out the um, Art Juice podcast, um, check that out, it's really awesome. I think that's right, Art Juice, yes. Um, but I was talking to the, their groups and, and someone was sharing, she was so frustrated. She'd been working 20 years and, and, and just felt like she should be so much further along, you know, and she's tried all these different materials. I mean, 20 years, like that's, she's committed. She spent so much time doing this and you could just hear in the question, uh, the difficulty and the challenge of this, like, it's just, really like this is what i've done with my life and I, it just hasn't ever like gelled it hasn't really gotten great like why hasn't it gotten great you know well the reason it hasn't gotten great is because people don't have all the information they don't have the the 45 gallons of information there's not 200 gallons there's 45 there's it's a finite amount of stuff to get this thing going it's not tons but it's a fair bit and that's what I learned to communicate and help people get. Because once you get it, you don't need to go to workshops. You don't need to talk to me anymore. You just need to make your work and go take other people's workshops because it's always fun. I love going to workshops, but this is, this is consumable. This is a thing that you can get. You just need all that information. And, and if, you don't, if you're missing 20% of it, 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 you can't really do it. You know, it's like driving a car. It's like you got to have four wheels on it. Three, it sort of works, but you're never really gonna get going. It's literally exactly like that. The other thing people are challenged with that they don't have is they don't have a process of working that's sustainable. And this is really challenging and something that I love, love talking about because this is something we can all do and we can all improve. And uh, so I, I dive into that a lot. So, you know, where you work, how you set it up, how you think about your art. I started this conversation talking about, you know, uh, is your art a vacation for your life or is art uh, a, a, on the to-do list? We need to reframe it. We need to make sure that what you're doing in your art studio practice is really cool for you. Like, you love doing this. And that's in your court. Like, we get to, you get to choose. You get to choose what you make. You get to choose and pay attention to the things that bring you alive and bring those into your art practice. That's what's so fun about this. You can make your art practice amazing. And if you have all the right information and you have this amazing art practice that allows you to come to it easily and you wanna go to it and you can get headway with not a lot of time and if you have the third piece, well, the third piece is awesome too, because you almost got that right now. That's just the community of us. It's just people that can support you and you can share things and learn from other people. And that's a huge part of Art to Life. That's, that's like what we do. You know, we're all, we're all helping each other move ourselves down this creative journey together. And we're all on different paths, but it's kind of the same path and it's the same way. People are in different stages on it. Some are in beginning, some are in the middle, some are at the end but you can always turn around and help someone a little behind you. And you can certainly be helped from people ahead of you. And that is a really cool way to see it. We all get to do this creative journey together. And, you know, it's crazy to be upset if you're in the beginning of the creative path, because you're just figuring it out. That's actually the most exciting place to be is the beginning because you got so much more to do. You only get to do this one time. So, savor that especially for those of you guys who are beginners because it's really it's a sweet spot to be in um okay cool uh michelle saying so michelle's uh 
kind of veteran, uh, amazing work. Uh, Michelle Bernard there. Michelle, post your website in the comments for us so people can go check out your work. It's amazing. But she's saying, I didn't even have a painting style before I started CVP. CVP is called the Creative Visionary Program. And after we do the free workshop, um, I, 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 I offer this as something if some people want to do it. A, a tiny fraction of people who do the free workshop do it every year. Um, and that's fine. But, but so it's a 12 week program and I'm not going into it now, but it's, but it's really cool. And Michelle did it and um, uh, she's made, she says, I have 32 paintings I love. And you know, I remember doing, I, I used to do um, a lot more one-on-one -on -one tr um, training, kind of mentorship. And I remember I was working with a woman and, and I was saying, you know, what's your biggest desire? Write down all the things you want in the world. And she, she actually had a fair bit, you know, she had her job, money situation, and things were pretty good. And, but this was a desire board. She could write down anything she wanted, anything at all. And it was sort of amazing because she wrote one thing. <laughs> and most people are like, I want to go to Disneyland. I want a house in the Caribbean. I want to sail around the world. I want to, you know, what all the stuff, you know, all the others. She wanted one thing, and, and she put this huge paint blob on the picture, and she wrote one thing on that board. And she said, I want to make one painting I love, right? Isn't that great? It's like, I so get that because when you, you know, what Michelle's saying, she's made 32 paintings that she loves. Like, who the hell cares if someone buys it or not? Like, that's such an achievement. It's such a huge thing to pull off and so worthwhile. And I know, I know you guys get that because for so many years, like, I was so hit and miss with my work. I'd start five, maybe get one, and then I'd ruin it. I was so uneven. But you can get this so you can get more, you can get your batting average way higher so you can make more and more work that you love. Um, cool. So, so I think that was my sort of the general things. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I, you need to have a little patience with this <clears throat> because let it soak in, watch, come back to it, look at your work, just be just like marinate. We have a whole week together. So I want you to just, you know, don't, don't, you know, hey, this isn't so great. You know, don't judge, just float along. Just see, be open. Try to bring your open, curious selves to this. That's the way we want to be when we're making art anyway. Curious, some wonder, kind of like a third grader, you know, or a kindergartner. That's the mindset of someone who's open and willing and is able to like create some amazing personal authentic work. So um, I encourage you to kind of have that and please ask a lot of questions. That lets me know you're there. And then I've, you know, I've been talking to my team. We're gonna have a lot of people helping answer the questions so we can answer them all. Cause I just know every single question that we answered is someone just moves the needle for them. So, all right, well, I think I'm gonna hop off. I think that's it unless anyone has any questions. Um, those were all the things. We're starting um, Friday, Valentine's Day. <laughs> Hope you're ready for that. I'm not. Um, we're going to be it's, we'll be uh, sending out this first video lesson at 9 a.m. And again, there's a workshop. Um, there's a workbook attached to it. Um, it's going to be really cool. Uh, each video lesson actually has um, its own workbook. So that's kind of neat. Um, OK. Uh, hey, Sarah, nice to see you. Uh, so Patricia's saying, how long per session approximately? So I I worked really hard with these video lessons. I work really hard to get it down. It's like I deliver the content and it's like half an hour or 40 minutes or something. It's really concise. It's not like I'm talking now. Like I've written down the main things I want to say because I want to just make, keep it really simple. But the, but the in-studio live trainings, they're going to be like an hour, hour and a half at least. And I'll just keep going. You know, I don't care. I'll just, as long as there's people there asking questions. But the, the, the free video lessons that we'll be emailing to you, those are going to be pretty concise. But you're going to probably spend longer because those are like a workbook and stuff like that. And you can watch it again. So um, that's, that's, how, that's how it's going to go. So it's not like, you know, hours and hours and hours. Like you're, it's not like you're just spending all day. But you will have an opportunity to like try this on your work at night or go home afterwards or, you know, be in your studio and be listening and trying it on your work. 
Um, so that's that's what's that's how it goes. Yeah. So that specific time, Pacific Standard Time, right? Um, oh, Zebra, it's my pleasure to do this. You know, I get a. It's a cool thing. I mean, it, this is really really fun for all of us here at Art to Life. This is our big. You know, we're exhausted after, but it's it's our big push. And and I get so much. I get to go do workshops, and some of you guys come, and I I can fill them up and. And I love it, you know, so there's a big, there's a big uh, benefit I get, not just helping people, but also I get to go teach these workshops in really cool places. And I, and I love that. And I get to, you know, participate. And so it's, it's really, really cool. So, all right, you guys, um, thanks for being here again. If you, uh, you know, click on the link in the comments, if you haven't joined the free artists Facebook group, make sure you're in there because that's where, I mean, I'm doing all this stuff all week. Um, yeah, so jump in there. That's that's a really good spot to be in, uh, and I will uh, I will be seeing you Friday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for the first lesson in the free Art to Life workshop. Okay, guys, super cool. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.